Good afternoon. This is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital with a review of the weekend trading report for November 2nd, 2013. We have a market that is in bullish normal conditions. It's overbought on an annual basis with a score of 71 out of 100 on the uh, weekly RSI 14. The threshold is 70. On a 10-day basis, we're in the middle of neutral with a score of 63 out of 100 on the 10-day NDX. Looking at the market mosaic, uh, the price relative to the 200-day moving average is at yellow bullish at 9.18%, giving us about a 7% cushion to sideways channel. Uh, the slope of the 50-day moving average is green bullish has improved to 0.69%. ADX is now strongly uptrending at 28.8%. ATR percentage has dropped down to 0.78%. The risk index is the 30 period moving average of the VIX divided by the 10, which comes in at a score of 1.13, which puts us in risk on conditions. You can see a uh, 90 day uh, time series of the Z score of that reading. The Z score is when we take the 1.13 reading, look back 5,000 days, compute the Z score, which right now is at uh, 1.58, where it's uh, stabilizing and starting to roll over here. Um, this has been a good swing trade in XIV. Uh, the last time it was at this level uh, featured an increase in volatility. So that swing trade may be over. Uh, but again, you can see the 90 day time series there. The blended monthly rebalancing this week, uh, you can see the new current holdings for the 13, 22 and 32 ETF portfolios. Uh, featuring U.S. technology and then in the 13s it's Australia and small caps. In the 22 it adds industrials and basic materials and in the 32 ETF it adds industrials and uh, the BRIC companies, or countries, excuse me. Next reevaluation is due on or about 1 December. ETF2, the theoretical model is still at 100%. The model portfolio will be at 100%. The solar ETF TAN, T-A-N, uh, was hit with its 10% trailing stop this week, and that money is now re going to be re reprogrammed into China. The Golden Dragon Index, uh, symbol PGJ. Looking at the current rankings, again, you can see... Um, in the 13 ETF, it's tech, Australia, small caps. In the 32, tech, industrials, and the BRICS. Looking at the uh, ETF MAX, um, it's uh, solar, uh, solar, Greece, Golden Dragon, China. Uh, China Tech, excuse me. Global Wind, China Tech, Internet Tech. Uh, Egypt. The ones that are interesting are those that are uh, green in the three month column, meaning they are exceptionally strong, um, and uh, white in the six month, meaning that the, um, the performance is accelerating with respect to the rest of the market. And so the first one you see there is steel, and that would be consistent with the uh, Increase in industrials and base materials. Uh, cocoa. Chuck, uh, more cocoa. So that's the top 50. Um, looking at the market health check here, um, we have uh, three regression channels drawn. The long term is the green, and that's uh, the center line is, is the regression line, the 30 day or 90 day regression line, and the channel is the outer formed by the maximum excursion from the regression line during the look back period which happened here uh, middle October. So we're in the upper you know fifth of the 90 day channel. Uh, the 30 day channel is also slipping up that's the black line uh, the black line channel we're right at the 30 day channel and then the 10 day uh, also uh, pointing up but not as steeply as the 30 so we've had a little bit of pullback here these last three or four days, but we're right uh, clustered at the center line of the 10-day. 
Uh, the dragon, which is the 10 period Bollinger Band, plus or minus 0.5 is this red shaded area. That's providing support for this move up and support is still holding at the dragon, so that's favorable. The dragon and support is outside of the river, which is the 30 period Bollinger Band, the dark shaded blue area. The lighter shaded blue area is the floodplain, which is the 30 period Bollinger Band, plus or minus 2. Uh, and that is uh, right where price is at the as you would expect at the high end of a uh, of a bull market. The horizontal uh, red lines are support levels that have held in the past. Right now I'm marking that at 174. Uh, so we're still uh, very bullish here. Um, could this have been a, an excessive move? Who knows? But uh, it is finding support where you would expect to find its support. I see this one at 173 as being really crucial uh, because that was that used to be resistance and now it could be support. So I would say um, violation of 173 would be uh, a real um, negative mark against this. Uh, against this, and then the next one would be 170, followed by about 168. You can see the 200 period moving average down here in the lightly shaded red. We're le we've been leaving that behind. In the story of the 30 period regression line slope, that's this sine wave looking thing here. It just uh, got steeper than it was uh, at the last peak, and so this is that's a, a favorable condition. The slope stayed positive. It did not come back and touch the zero line here, but the reversal went higher once the political uh, resolutions were achieved. So this is a market that finding support at an area where you would expect it to find support if there's more room above. Uh, so this little pullback is well within just the noise. And uh, so uh, everything looks positive here. Uh, we were oversold for almost 20 days, pulled back, found support on percent %R above the 50-yard marker, uh, and starting to hook back up. We've had one nice leg off of this bottom, uh, which just closed in the percent price oscillator. So this is a natural uh, resting point. Uh, we'll now see if there's a uh, if there's another leg up. If there is, it could be of the magnitude, you know, five to eight percent, like we're seeing here. Uh, if there's a pullback, the last two that we've seen have been about five percent pullbacks, and uh, that would bring us back to uh, the Bollinger Band mean. Uh, so that's to me uh, that that's a crucial support. So first. It's got two strong levels of support at 174 and 173 to hold it. And then um, uh, the Bollinger Band mean uh, would be kind of like the third strike against it. So still looks all favorable. Um, looking at the ETF2 regional report, all 10 of the regions are on buy signals, uh, with the strongest being EFA. Uh, or EFA, the globals being stronger than the S&P, although the S&P has started to close that gap now. With the S&P at 48 and the uh, globals at 49, that gap is closed. Uh, inside the U.S., it's uh, technology at 53, small caps at 50, mid caps at 48, and then uh, large caps at 48, the tiebreaker going to the mids. So this is still risk on inside the U.S., as it starts to come back and close the gap on the globals. The two strongest sectors are IEV, the European 350 at 51, and the U.S. Tech at 53. And the two weakest remain uh, Latin America uh, at 45 and Japan at 42. Inside the U.S., sector spiders. Uh, strength is in the industrials and materials. Um, and consumer discretionary. So that's, I would call that a, a risk on uh, posture as well. In the world market model, um, everything in the U.S. is above average except the diamonds, and uh, the growth story is especially strong. Uh, in Asia, it's uh, China, South Korea, uh, extremely above average, followed by Australia, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Taiwan. Um, inside Europe, it's everything is above or well above average except Sweden. That's the only laggard. Uh, all of the broader European indexes uh, are uh, above average. Inside the global uh, business sectors versus the U.S. business sectors, uh, the, it's now becoming about a crapshoot. 
um, they're, they're very close in every case. The U.S. industrials have a slight lead. Global tech has a slight lead over their counterparts. Uh, but uh, it's this modified risk on as the defensive plays like uh, staples and utilities uh, and finance are lagging. Uh, top ETFs in the using the ETF2 lens, um, it's, uh, similar to the blended monthly rebalancing look. And then um, the the up and comers are the ones that are in green in strength and white in consistency. That's new money flowing in. So that would be the industrial producer alpha dex, the metals and mining, Austria, Germany, uh, Russia, oil and gas exploration, industrials, and high beta. So there's a common theme of the global selected companies. Um, the industrial sectors um, are uh, starting to emerge as the next round of leaders. Looking at the Dow 30 through the same lens, Boeing, Nike, General Electric, American Express, and 3M, uh, those, those last four from GE through 3M uh, are strength leaders and starting to emerge. Their strength is in the green, consistency is in the white. Um, the returning strength to the U.S. is now reflected in the Dow that we're down to four symbols from seven that were in the red on strength. Uh, and the bottom feeders being uh, Merck, Chevron, Cisco, and IBM. Uh, Intel is one that we could look at as being relatively early in its, um, it, with its emerging strength as it's white on strength and yellow on consistency. Starting to see, and conversely, the decay in DuPont and United Tech in that they are white on strength and green on consistency. Uh, we'll leap ahead to the daily report. Handful of signals now on the uh, overreaction system and in channeling. So we have some good targets to choose from and to frame a 5DD in uh, agriculture, 551Ws in Brazil, Latin America financials, globals, Asia less Japan, US real estate and coal. Um, and also J.P. Morgan and Verizon from the Dow 30. And then a handful of good candidates for the auto framer at 2 to 1. Now Chevron should be of interest. It's a, it comes in at 4 on the RSI 2. It was a percent loser on Friday. Um, and is number 5 on the max pain range compression. Uh, we've got Caterpillar, Merck, Morgan and Travelers all testing out better than two to one on the auto framer, and then some five five ones in uh, J.P. Morgan and in uh, Verizon. Looking at the ETF thirty in the, in the same lens, uh, we have plenty that were uh, signals on the RSI two score that uh, is in single digits. So, uh, and then and then a lot that also test out well on the auto framer. Good patterns in the 551W, all those are very favorable. So something like Brazil should be of much interest to you. It's a 6 on RSI 2. It was a percent loser on Friday. It was 2.1 uh, to 1 on the reward to risk. Number 4, that max pain range compression and is a 551W as well as a channeling. So that's a, a target rich environment on um, value opportunities um, uh, combined with patterns. Uh, the auto framer for your for your use. You can see the stats as an example on Brazil. If you need the, the numbers to help you frame the trades. Um, coming to the end of a nice uh, upward move, this little pullback has not really been violent. It's a, what I would call an orderly pullback, um, and it could uh, take a look at the last five days as consolidation. And uh, this would be consistent with the uh, uh, support level starting to emerge. <clears throat> the uh, slope of that 30-day regression line continues to improve. It's now just starting to get extreme as it crosses uh, above 1.0 <coughs> uh, on the Z-score. And uh, price has stabilized at the six-month average with respect to the 200-day moving average. This would be a nice place for it to continue to go. 
uh, if we can get another leg up here and then we'd be looking at another probably five to six percent on the upside volatility decaying that's good some quick reference information uh, looking at the Z scores of the regression lines the 90 is still uh, slightly improving as we go it's reversing this long decay from one and a half Z when it came back to the zero line and it's now uh, up around 0.6 and getting better um, the I like the fact that the 30 made a higher low and it's now stretching up so there's still some more room for it to get better uh, before it crests out here at 2. And this little pullback in the 10 has not been disorderly. In fact, this it's pulled right back to the uh, to the zero line almost. And uh, But the sell-off in price uh, only brings it back to the edge of the river. So that would be a very favorable place uh, for it to continue to move higher. The last three times it did that, it, it hasn't really. It never really halted right at the edge of the river before the next move up we saw it here and here and here uh, it always came back and tested the downside of the river but um, we can be hopeful and that's everything I want to cover from uh, the weekend report review this is uh, uh, no news is good news I would take this as um, there's uh, uh, a failure to fail at this price level the market seems to be comfortable with the resolution of the politics and, uh, and so we could be looking at another technical bounce here of uh, you know around five percent would not be out of line at all uh, in the next couple of weeks so uh, Ken Long from Tortoise Capital keep your powder dry and your risk measured